Welcome to Terminal Value. So everything I do here at Terminal Value is based around one big question, and that is how do growth-oriented people transform their business and their life to achieve world-class levels of value in everything they do? That is the question, and I am here to bring you the answers. My name is Doug Utberg, and this is Terminal Value. I publish new podcast episodes five times per week. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any content. And also make sure to follow me on social. You can just look for the Doug Utberg handle. Please comment and let me know your thoughts. I'm looking forward to working together so that we can make your life amazing. Hey there, everybody. So today's podcast episode is with John and Mark Cronin from John's Crazy Socks. And I was just personally really touched by this podcast because uh, so John has Down syndrome, but he does not let that stop him in any way. He is really just an amazing person, as is Mark. And you can get to hear a little bit about their story and the business they've built really just about spreading their social mission and just about spreading happiness. So it's really worth a listen and let's go ahead and get going. Welcome to the Terminal Value Podcast. We have John and Mark Cronin with us today from John's Crazy Socks. And what we're going to be talking about is how all they want to do with their business is change the world. And I love that point of view because I think changing the world is probably one of the best purposes you can have from your business or entity. So anyway, John, Mark, please introduce yourselves. So, I go, uh, my name is John, and my partner, my dad, Mark. We are John's Crazy Socks. And what's our mission, pal? Our mission is spread happiness. That's it. And uh, do you want to talk about me? Do I want to talk about you? Yeah. Let me do a fuller introduction, Doug. All right. right. Right? I'm going to say so, it. Some things to know about my partner. You're an entrepreneur? Yes, I am. You're a sock tycoon. Yes, I am. You're a public speaker. Yes. You are a philanthropist. Yes, I am. You're an athlete. Yes, I am. You're a dancer. Yes. Uh, let's see. You have a girlfriend, yes. so that means you're a boyfriend. Yeah, I'm very smooth. Very smooth. And <laughs> you happen to have Down syndrome. I do. I have Down syndrome. Down syndrome never. Hold me back. No, it does not, does it? <laughs> so there we are. We, uh, we've created John's Crazy Socks, a social enterprise. We're really driven to spread happiness. Uh-huh. But much of what we do is show what's possible, show what people with different abilities can achieve. Well, I think that's really, I mean, I, I just can't say how wonderful that is because, you know, one of the things that I've really become attuned to as you know, over the last couple of years, as I've started to get involved in my city's Rotary chapter is just how many people are out there, you know, really doing, I would say, you know, kind of really doing wonderful mission driven things. And of course, I think people who are in the field frequently know about it, but I think a lot of people kind of out in the business community, it's kind of invisible to them unless they have somebody who helps them see all the good things that are happening. I mean, and God forbid, if you read the news, I mean, (laughs) don't do that if you want to maintain your mental health. But anyway, hearing about what you're doing just sounds wonderful. I want to know about John's crazy socks. I mean, obviously John likes socks, I'm assuming. You are a sock aficionado, aren't you? Yes, I am. We're a little more than, well, we're five and a half years old now. So we started back in 2016. um, And our story actually started in a small log cabin in the woods. No. No, not really. It started (laughs) on suburban Long Island. That's where we live, out in the town of Huntington. So it's the fall of 2016. And where were you, pal? I I was at... Huntington High School. It's okay. going to be my last year's floor. So John knows he's in his last year of school. Like everybody else, he's trying to figure out, what do I do next? Yeah. What were you looking at? I look at job, program, mm-hmm. and school. I don't like the option. I don't like. He didn't say anything he liked. And Doug, yeah. this is an unfortunate reality for too many Americans. Only one in five people with a disability are employed. Oh, so that's, tough. that's yeah, that's tough. 
I'm but John here, John's a natural entrepreneur. Yes, I am. If you didn't see a job you wanted, what would you say? I said, I want to create one. I want to make one. Right. And what did you tell me? I said, I want to go into business with my dad. I'm nice father and son business together. Which is pretty cool. I'm a lucky man. I've got three sons. Yes, you are. <laughs> and this is one I could work with. Yes, I am. <laughs> So we set about, all right, let's go into business together. I'm an entrepreneur. I was at that point starting a couple of other businesses. What do you want to do? And Doug, you work with entrepreneurs all the time. You know, entrepreneurs always have a lot of ideas. Oh, absolutely. And some of them are good ideas. Yeah, yeah, exactly. (laughs) So what was one of your ideas for a business? One of them is a a food truck. I uh-huh. have an idea uh, from the movie Chef and John Farrow. The okay. Movie, the movie about a father and son buying a food truck. So this seemed like a lot of fun. And we're thinking, what could we make? Where would we put the food yeah. truck? But we ran into a problem. We can't cook. Yeah, we can't cook. That could be a problem. <laughs> but then, right before Thanksgiving... John had his eureka moment. I did. I want to sell crazy socks. Why socks? It's fun. It's colorful. It's creative. It, it always let me be me. John had worn these crazy socks his whole life. We used to drive around looking for them. So we figured this. If he loved them that much, surely other people would too. We could find our tribe. So at that point, we went the lean startup route. We didn't bother with the the detailed business plan. We said, Mm -hmm. let's get something up and running, and our customers will tell us. So we built a website. We built it on the Shopify platform. We went, got some inventory. We're bootstrapping. So, you know, you got to make do with what you have. Oh, sure. The only marketing we did was to set up a Facebook page. I would take out my cell phone. We made videos. And who do you think was in those videos? I am. I talk about socks. Socks, socks, and more socks. That's and awesome. What, and what day did we open? We opened on the Friday, December 9th, 2016. And we weren't sure what to expect. But we got a flood of orders. It certainly felt like a flood of orders, even the first day. Yeah. And we got 42 orders, and most of them were local. We live in the town of Huntington. Sure. Most of them in Huntington. So what did we decide to do with those orders? Our home deliveries, uh, we got our red boxes, and I put a sock in the box, and I put I put something else. I put a candy, a hundred kisses, and I put in a chicken you know, I, I wrote. So I know, Doug, you know, you talk about creating a world-class business. Well, right from the start, even though we had meager resources, you want to wow people. You yeah. want to do something special. So just the very opening of the package, you make an experience. And in that case, we were doing home deliveries. We loaded up the car, yes. drove around, and you knocked on doors, handing out socks. I did. How did the customers respond? Customers loved it. They took a, a photos. They posted on Social media would a give a spread. Right. We had customers calling back just to get John to come back to their house. Um, and there were some nights, <laughs> just the two of us, we're out past 10 o'clock at night and John's knocking on doors. Just John with your socks. You know, like, don't shoot. <laughs> <laughs> but we learned, right? What? We shipped 452 orders. In two weeks, and we said, we got something here. We learned, one. One, people want to buy socks. Two, people want to buy socks for me. They related to John. They liked that personal touch. They liked the fact we had already pledged 5% of our earnings to the Special Olympics. And you learn by doing. So we learned that this young man. This is old man. Yeah, this old man. We could sell socks. So that's how we got started. 
And we built this social enterprise. And today, how many different socks do we have? 4,000 different, different uh, kind of socks. 4,000 socks, which makes John the owner of the world's largest sock store. We've shipped over 360,000 orders to 88 different countries. We've raised over $500,000 for our charity wow. partners. We have 34 employees, 22 of whom have a different ability. And we've got 29,000 five-star reviews. So we've taken it from just the two of us to a thriving organization. Well, and wow, there's just so much to unpack there. I think the first thing that I absolutely love is how, well, uh, number one is just how, John, you showed the initiative to say, okay, well, if I don't see something I like, then I'm going to go make something I like. That in and of itself, I think is amazing. But the other thing was, that I think you just gave a really exceptional case study in the way to essentially bootstrap a business in the social era. Because you know, if you don't have an established product and established market, essentially what you have to do is you have to try to put together low cost trials to be able to figure out whether there is demand for what you're selling. And in your case, what you do is you put up a page, you started recording, and then as orders came in, you started iterating from there. And you know, I think that's a year for anybody who's looking to either start fresh or pivot, that right there is an exceptional way to be able to test out your ideas at a very low cost so you can know whether you have something before you start plowing money into it. I'll give you an example of this. Uh- a friend of mine, a young man who he and his partner want to start a series of juice bars, uh-huh. uh, specialized juice bars, and they have a mission wrapped around it. It seems like a neat idea. What they want to do is create central kitchens where they'll make the products and then have a whole host of satellite places. And they're talking to me about this and they're trying to raise money. And, and mm-hmm. I'm listening and I'm saying, wait a second, don't you think you ought to open one? Before you decide to open 25, don't you think you ought to test it and see how the customers respond before you start getting all these other kitchens? Like, come on now, people. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes. Well, and the other thing that I really absolutely love about the way that you built your business is that you built a story behind your business. Because I did the business school, right? I had, my, I had the corporate career, you know, I was in the kind of corporate way of looking things. But the more I interact with entrepreneurs, the more I've come to believe that if you have a business you are funding yourself, that you need to be the brand of that business. And your story needs to be central to your business. Otherwise, you are leaving growth on the table. You have to have a purpose. You have yeah. to know what you're about. And it, it has to be something larger than ourselves. And it can't just be, we're going to make money. And don't get me wrong, Doug. We want to make money. We like to leave sure. indoors, you know, but, but it's got to be something larger. And that's not only important for you, it's important for your customers and it's important for your colleagues. If you're going to hire people, you know, that's one of the lessons I think coming out of the big quit is people are asking, what am I doing and why am I doing this? And as an organization, you got to offer something more. Yeah, something that's I, worthwhile, make, worthy of their commitment. Yeah, well, because I think it's like you said uh, right there, you know, is worthy of people's commitment. Because in order to get people to commit to what you're doing, then th- there has to be something that you're doing that they really believe in. By extension, I think I would think that means that you need to be backing up what you're talking about, which is one of the places where I think, unfortunately, you run into a lot of leadership problems in a number of places is that there's a, you know, as uh, so I was recently uh, having a conversation with Alan Weiss from, you know, Million Dollar Consulting. And, you know, but like one of the things he says is that, you know, he advocates what he calls leadership by compliance as opposed to commitment. And leadership by compliance is say, follow me. <laughs> say, okay, here, follow me. Let's go. Whereas a lot of people do is they say, okay, go do that. <laughs> they'll try to people will try to point at things that can need to be done and say okay yeah i'm just going to stand here you go do that but you know essentially what you're saying is no you're saying follow me not only follow me and do what i'm doing but follow me do what i'm doing and go after and let's go both address the the same cause together which i think i would say in consultant vernacular i would say you're applying both compliance and commitment and leading from the front which i think is the best way to lead 
Well, I think you have to start there. You have to be careful not to make the organization about an individual. Mm -hmm. um, that it has to be larger. And it starts that way. Yeah. But then the organization has to take on a life of its own. And then, you know, our role as leaders, our role is to set the vision and the direction. Yeah. You know, make sure the culture gets started and that we're staying true to that purpose and to our values. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, if you draw the org chart, our, our role is at the bottom of the org chart. It's yeah. to serve everybody else and make sure they're in a position to succeed and do their job. Yeah. Uh, and part of that, you know, if, so our mission, right, is to spread happiness. We could talk about the five pillars that were built the business. Uh, please do. But we repeat these all the time. Right? <laughs> because this is what drives our business. So it's not some idle phrase, but it's all the time. Is this going to be true to spreading happiness? Is this who we are? You know? And our five pillars are inspiration and if, hope. If, if, and hope. Give it back. Fred Pilates, you can uh, make it personal and make it a great place to work. Right. Make it a great place to work. Right. If yeah. we're spreading happiness, we have to start at home. Our yeah. colleagues have to be happy working here. You got to offer that mission worthy of their commitment. Everybody has to know why their job matters, why they are important, and they're helping carry out that mission. There's no cog in machinery. There's no you know, make work job. And this is not some pie in the sky thing. To me, it's nuts and bolts. If you have somebody who's just the cog in the machine or their job's not important, why are they on the payroll? Well, I think I'm sure you probably heard this analogy before, but I'll tell it again or the story. Uh, one story I heard was, you know, during the uh, in the mid 20th century in the U.S. space race, where the U.S. and the Soviet Union were both trying to send a person to the moon, and they're trying to see who could get there first. I think there there was uh, I forget which network had a news reporter down in Cape Canaveral in Florida, and they were interviewing people who were involved. And I think and there was one person. I think they were they were just I think cleaning out a stairwell, but they were you know very very enthusiastically cleaning out the stairwell, and so you know the reporter came over and asked him, oh, what are you doing? And they said, I'm sending a man to the moon. Right. Yes, I love yes. that story. I've yes, heard it. I'm sending it a man to the moon. President Kennedy visiting NASA station in Houston. Yeah. But yes. So then, you know, part of that, make it a great place to work. Put people in a position to succeed. Yes. Don't ask people to do what they can't do and give them the support they need. You know, if our webmaster needs a software suite, get it for them. If yeah. one of our packers needs a particular chair, get the chair. Now, yeah. we don't have endless resources, but no, do that. But, yeah. and then say thank you. <laughs> it's a really simple notion. You know, recognize the work people do. You care about your podcast. Yeah. Huh? You're right? Yes. Just, hey, I saw you doing that. And the last piece, stay the hell out of the way. Let people do their jobs. Yes. You know, so you do that. The making it personal to this day, what goes in every package? I guess they can I wrote and candy. Thank you, no, in candy. But we're always looking for ways to connect to our customers. You know, those home deliveries? Yeah. So now we ship all over the world. You know, 365,000 packages is added 380. But if we get a an order between our office and home, what are you doing? I said you home delivery. Right? But yeah. this is, we were talking before we got started, who you are makes itself manifest in everything you do. Yes. The values that you care about have to keep showing up. So, you know, if you call here, you never get voice jail. A person answers the phone. We have no scripts. We don't listen in on those phone calls. You're going to have a human conversation, right? or here's one. We, we sell socks for diabetics. It's uh -huh. one of 4,000 socks. So one day one of our packers comes and says, you know, we're selling the, we're sending socks to diabetics and we're sending them candy. What's wrong with that picture? So now we have a supply of sugar-free candy. 
that goes in that package. It doesn't take much. No. Then fun products you can love. This works in two ways. One, you have to know who you are. So everything we sell has got to be fun, spread happiness. I be behind. John's got to approve it. And he has turned things down, believe me. Um, but part of it is also, yes, we have a very strong social mission. But we got to have the nuts and bolts of the business working well. Yeah. So we got to have a great website. You got to have great selection. You got to have great products. You got to have great service. We do same day shipping. An order comes in by three o'clock. It's going out the same day. We do better shipping than Amazon. Yeah. And Jeff Bezos over in Amazon, he's not putting a thank you note and candy in those packages. <laughs> but, but you know, you got to deliver the goods. Yeah. Um, and then second, it's giving back. It's not enough to just sell stuff. You got to give back. You got to connect. So we started by pledging five percent of our earnings to the Special Olympics. And why the Special Olympics? I'm Olympic. Yes, you are, aren't you? But we've gone on to create products that raise awareness and celebrate causes and raise money for those causes. So, what was the first awareness sock? A Down syndrome awareness socks. Down syndrome awareness socks. And who designed them? I did. And they celebrate people with Down syndrome. They say, look, let's look at a great person this is. And they raise money for the National Down Syndrome Society. We've got autism awareness socks. A, a, a pet rescue socks. CP socks, right? We have pet rescue socks that raise money for an animal shelter. In March of 2020, when the pandemic was at its, was at its height around here, we made healthcare superhero socks to say thank you to the frontline workers. And they've raised over $50,000 for the American Nurses Foundation. So, you know, we sponsor an autism can do scholarship. But the most important thing we do, we want to show what's possible. And to a degree, yeah. that's how we run the business. It's that you know, we want to show the power of the social enterprise. And that you can build the business based on love. But mostly we want to show what people with different abilities can do. So John is Down syndrome. I do. We don't put John in the back. No. Nope. You're right up front. You're the face of the business. Yes, I am. More than half of our colleagues have a different ability. And that's not enough. We want to show the world. So we create content all the time. No broccoli. Nothing that your mother says, sit down and eat this. This will be good for you. It's got to be something that's fun and entertaining. Show people as they are. We host tours and work groups from schools and social service agencies. Because of the pandemic, we moved those online. Now uh -huh. we're all doing them in person. So we've had school groups around the world come in. And we want those students to say, yes, there's a place for me. I can have a job. We do speaking engagements. So we've, and the world's opening up again. We've crisscrossed Canada, the US, Mexico, and standing up in front of groups to show, look, look what can happen. We do advocacy work. So we've testified twice before the Congre US Congress. We've spoken at the United wow. Nations. Um, and we had a local legislator in here today because we want them to see, look what you can do. And you wrap all that up. And you get John's crazy socks. So that if you're a customer, yes, you're going to get, you get the greatest selection of socks around. You're going to get great products, great service. But in addition to that, you know that you're helping us employ people with different abilities. You're helping us give back. You're helping us spread happiness. You are part of it. So that's the experience you get. I don't even know that I can articulate how great that is. I mean, because I, I think that there's a tendency, I think, in the part of some people, you know, particularly when you see the negativity going through the news to say, okay, well, you know, why doesn't somebody do something about all that? Well, you know, somebody in a lot of cases is us. You know, if somebody's going to do something, that means I have to do something. Uh, you know, I can't just wait around for somebody else to handle it. And, you know, I shouldn't expect elected officials to do that either. It's that, you know, I, meaning we, should be creating something that makes a positive difference. 
And well, John, I think that's something that I think the two of you can really inspire other people to do. Well, John will tell you, what are the keys to happiness? It's gratitude and your father. The more we do for others, the better off we are. And that, to me, is not only something key to our lives, but it's a good business way. Uh -huh. What can we do for you? You know, too often in this country lately, I only hear people talk about what's in it for me. You know, on one side, either leave me alone. I don't need anybody else. Just I'm fine. Leave me alone. Or, oh, we're going to do this. We're going to, you know, forgive loans. We're going to give money here and give money there. And nobody is saying, well, wait a second. What am I going to do for others? You know, that, that yeah. we mentioned, I mentioned President Kennedy before. Mm -hmm. Nobody's echoing his lines of that's not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. And in fact, we all feel better when we do for others. There's yeah. no better feeling than when we wow a customer. Yeah, I completely agree. And I think that spirit of service, I think that to me really is the message that I'm hearing from what you're saying is just the, the idea of building your business around the idea of service and how, you know, as we were talking about in the pre-show, right? You know, there's not like you, people don't have a work life and a personal life. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm one way when I'm, when I'm not, when I'm working and I'm another way when I'm at home, it's like the two are one, you can kind of try to pretend they're separate, but they're not, you're one person. And if you were able to architect a business where you can make your business about service, I can't think of a, just a better way to really create value for your family and the community. Yeah. Uh, well, that is just absolutely awesome. I feel really inspired right now. So give us one or two last thoughts and then let everybody know where they can connect with you online. Well, you have advice for people? I do. Follow your heart. Follow your dreams. Work hard. So you can do. That's pretty good, pal. And where can people find us? You can find us at John Crazy Sock. Dot com. John's crazy socks.com. Plus, we'll invite your listeners to a few things. First, uh, we now have a podcast. It's not quite as professional as yours. What's the name of it? The Spreading Happiness Podcast. Spreading Happiness Podcast. Well, it's probably more fun than mine. So, each week, <laughs> all we're trying to do is make people smile. We share some good news, some good stories. We banter you to find out what's going on with John. We tell some jokes. You get an update on John's love life. So we do that every Tuesday afternoon. What do you host? I host a dance party every Tuesday at 3 p.m. John hosts an online dance party every Tuesday at 3 o'clock. So we invite people to join us. Go to the website. You'll find the link there. We're on all the social media platforms. You like doing those TikTok videos, don't you? Yeah, Dad. Right? And right now depending on when you release the, the podcast, we are sponsoring our second annual sock design contest. Ooh. You don't have to be a graphic artist. Share with us what you think is a great sock design. Winner gets $1,000. Plus, we make the socks. We'll make you sock famous. And we're going to donate 10% from the sale of those socks to a charity, and you help us pick the charity. So we got that's a lot a, going on. No, and awesome. you are related to a terminal, a terminal value. Terminal value? You terminal think value. people should check out the Terminal Value podcast? podcast. Huh? Yes. And I think that's a good idea. But, you know, it's what I said before. If customers, they connect with us, support, you know, buy from us. They're helping us employ people with different abilities. They help us give back. Most of all, they're helping us spread happiness. And if we can help people in any way, all they got to do is reach out. That is outstanding. Well, John, Mark, I loved hearing your story. Thank you so much for sharing. I really appreciate it. And I just hope you have the most wonderful rest of your day. Well, thank you very much. Thank John. you. Hey, thanks for watching to the end of the video. There's just a couple of things that I need from you right now. Number one is I need you to subscribe. If you're not already a subscriber to the channel, please hit the subscribe button and turn notifications on. That way you will know every time I publish new content. 
Number two, comment. Share your thoughts. I want to know what you did and didn't like. What should I make next? And number three, share this with your friends. Go on to Facebook or Instagram or LinkedIn, wherever you uh, you hang out socially, and then post a link to this video and let people know what you liked about it and make sure to tag me. And then what I would also like to do is I would like to offer you the most incredible free gift ever. And this is related to my business where I help other businesses reduce their contract related costs. If you are a decision maker in a business, then I want to talk with you to see about how we can address your contract costs and drive savings. If you know somebody who is a business decision maker, then I would like you to help me get in contact with them. And in exchange, I am going to give you a absolutely free vacation at one of 30 places across the United States with no obligation and no timeshare pitch. Uh, the value of this, again, depending on how much savings we achieve, can literally be between thousands and millions. So anyway, just hit the button below for the most incredible free gift ever. Make sure to subscribe, share, and comment, and watch the next video because I'll be at you with more.